Okay, so as I was saying, we do have a short review of graphing. Uh, we'll be going on that right now. Uh, remember, this is in your appendix. It's in the, the back part of your book. So, when we talk about graphing, what we really are talking about is something called the rectangular coordinate system. You guys have heard of this as like the x, y axis. <coughs> so if you keep track, C.3, a short review of graphing. And more specifically, we'll be reviewing the rectangular coordinate system. Now, I just mentioned that this has another name, too. This is also called like the x-y axis. You guys have heard of that before, right? where we have the x and y axis, they're crossing, they make up this, this plane, what we call a, a two-dimensional plane. It's also called the Cartesian plane. Have you ever heard of the Cartesian plane before? Well, it's called the Cartesian plane because this guy named Rene Descartes, you know Rene Descartes? He was a philosopher, mathematician, was kind of like an all-in-all guy. Um, he is, a, is the one that kind of, well, he's credited with first discovering the, the Cartesian plane of the rectangular coordinate system. And do you guys want to hear the story of how he did it? It's kind of funny. This is the story of how he did it. So this guy was kind of a sickly dude, and he would stay in bed till like 12 o'clock. Then he would get up, take about a three-hour bath, do a little bit of math, talk to some royalty, teach them like a tutor, and then go to sleep. So he was, he was always in bed, and, or always like sitting in the bathtub. This is back in like the, I think it's 1600s or something. So they didn't have like TV or whatnot. Otherwise, he just would have been watching TV all the time. So this guy was sitting in his bathtub, looking at the corner of the wall, as you always do when you're in the bathtub for like four hours, right? You just kind of look at the wall. And so he's watching the ceiling, and he's noticing this fly, like crawling on the, on the ceiling. And he has this idea. He goes, oh, you know what? I can mark where that fly is by counting a certain number of inches over on this wall, and a certain number of inches over on this wall, and can mark exactly where it's going. And that's the idea behind our x-y axis. Isn't that kind of crazy? At least that's a story. That's how it's supposed to come about. Not sure if I believe it completely, but that's, that's a plan. Anyway, we know it as this thing. That's a rectangular coordinate system. And each of these has, all these parts have a name. Uh, specifically, what do we call this horizontal axis right here? Which one is this? That's right, this is our x-axis, where all of our x-coordinates are, are valued on. How about the vertical one, what do we call that? Uh -huh. Now, of course, these axes, what we call intersect. They intersect at exactly one point that goes right here, the point which is on both the x and y-axis. What's that called? Very good. And the coordinate would be 0, 0. We're going to plot points in a, in a second. We know that we have to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate. This specific one is the origin. Now, of course, when we look at the x-y-axis, or the rectangular coordinate plane, we see four quadrants. Do you remember what the names of these quadrants are? Well, the 1, 2, 3, and 4. Do you know which one is quadrant 1? Is this quadrant 1, this one, this one? Which one? This one? This one? No, the first one. The origin. Yeah. Or it says origin. Yeah, very good. That's exactly right. So this is quadrant one. Now, does it go counterclockwise or clockwise for quadrant two? Good. So this is two, three, and four. Also, we know that. These things are assigned, these, uh, this x-axis and y-axis, we assign values to them. And really what we have here is a crossing of two number lines that go in both directions. That's really what they are. It's a number line going this way uh, horizontally and this way vertically. The question I have for you is which way is which? Do we go positive to the right or positive to the left? Of course, because it really is a number line just like any other number line you've ever seen. So here we do like the one. Two, three. On the left hand side, we, we go negative. That's why our center, our origin is zero, zero. How about the vertical axis? Are we going positive up or positive down? Positive. Sure.
And now that we've assigned values to both the x and y axis, we can go ahead and plot some points. So right now what I'd like you to do is draw a different x, y axis on your paper right now. We're going to practice plotting some points. I'll show you how to do a couple in case you've just totally forgotten how to do this stuff. Then I'll just ask you to do it and we'll go on from there. Okay, when we plot points in here, we're going to plot the, usually points are, are given by capital letter. So we plot the value, we put a little dot, and then we put the capital letter that signifies our point. So let's try a couple ones that are they're not so bad. Let's try 3, 5. Now, when I say 3, 5 like this, that signifies a point. But you have to know what's the x value and what's the y value. In this situation, what is our x coordinate or x value in this case? Good. So it's basically alphabetical order. It goes x comma y. So alphabetical order x, y. Our first one's 3, 5. What's that tell you to do? Over 3 from where? So we start always in the center, our origin, and we go over to the, you said right? One, two, three, and then where? Okay, so we're not putting a point here, we're going over three in combination to up five, because our y coordinate is five. We put that, and if I say this is point A, then we're going to put a point A, just like that. How about we try point B, negative two, comma, negative four. What's negative two, comma, negative four tell us to do? Left how many? And then that's of course is that from point A or from our origin? origin. So we're always going back to the center when we're plotting points. Now, listen carefully, when we're when we're graphing lines, if you're dealing with a linear equation, we are going to be going from sometimes our y-intercept, which we'll talk about that a lot later, and counting up and over using our slope. And that's that's a little bit different. Right now, if you're just plotting points, we're always starting at the origin. So we're going left two and then where? Good. We'll put that B, and we're good to go. Let's try a few more. Let's do, I'm going to have you do these on your own. Why don't you try 1, negative 3. Negative 3, comma 4. We'll do 0, 4. And we'll do 5, 0. So take some time and plot those on your own. And we'll talk about what quadrant these things are in as well. So point C. Point C says I'm going over to the right one because that's positive, and then I'm going to go down three units because that's negative three. So our point C should be over one, down three, should be right there. Did you get point C correct? Give me a little head nod if you did. Good, all right. The next one is negative three, four. So from the origin again, we're going negative three. It's always our x first <coughs> because that's the first number we're doing. Is our x coordinate one, two, three to the left, and then four up. That puts us about right there. I'm going to label that D. Next one, the zero, 4. If you ever have that zero that says, well, if you start at the origin, that's the point zero, 0, you don't have to go over at all, or you don't have to go up at all if it's, on, if it's the y coordinate. So zero, 4 says, I'm starting the origin, I go over 0, and then I go up 4. Did you all get that one right? right. Last one, 5, 0. This says you are going positive 5 on the x axis, but then you're not going to go up or down at all. That's going to be our point. How many will have all of these points correct? Good, very good. Can you name the quadrants? What's the quadrant for C? Good. How about for A? How about for B? How about E? Actually, it doesn't have a quadrant. The axes are not in quadrants. And so, the trick question, ha ha ha, gotcha. 
No, I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to get you in this class. Um, but no, it's not in the quadrant. You'd say that would be like on the y-axis. And of course, f would be on the x-axis. If it's here in the center, you can say x-axis and y-axis, or you can say the origin. Any one of those will work. Does that make sense to you? Okay. Last one I want to ask you is, all these points had whole number coordinates. Is it possible to graph something like 2.5, 1.5? Is that okay? Sure, that just says you're not going to be on a, a hash mark. If this is G. We we would go over two and a half, about right in the middle of that, then up one and a half, and we could put points like that as well. So just so you know, you don't have to have whole numbers to graph. You can have fractions or decimals, anything that you like. Would you raise your hand if you're okay on quadrants and potting points? Good deal. Let's see if we can graph some of these things. Also, we're going to talk about something called I know you've heard of it before. Linear equations. You, you've heard of linear equations? What's the linear part of that mean? Line. Yeah, that's the key word. Linear is, it means line. So line equations. Things that make lines. And in math, when we say a line, we don't mean, oh, a line. It, it means a straight line. That's what we imply. So when we draw lines in here, they're, they're straight lines. So when we're talking about linear equations, we're talking about equations that on a graph will create a straight line. Horizontal, angled, up or down. Even vertical in some cases. So linear equations, we're talking about line equations. Now, you are going to get some linear equations in different forms. This form, when you have something like 7x minus 2y equals 4. This form right here, where you have that both variables, notice how we're having two variables here, by the way. We have an x variable and a y. Why do you suppose we have an x variable and a y variable? We have two axes, right? We better have two variables unless we have a vertical or a horizontal line. If we want to change across both axes, we need both variables. Uh, so that's, that's what this signifies. Do you remember what it's called when you have both your variables to one side and your constant to the other side? It's the standard form. Mm -hmm. If you've never been taught how to use standard form appropriately, you're going to learn that in this, in this class. Because this, this form, even though it looks kind of like, why would you want that? Why don't we do slope intercept, which is the next thing I'm going to show you. Because this can help you out. This can make graphing very quick in certain cases. I'll show you that later on when we get to graphing linear inequalities. <clears throat> So we've got, of course, two variables. We talked about y just a second ago. We have two axes. We're going to need two variables to make sure we can coordinate with both of them. The graph is a straight line. For us, that's kind of a redundancy there, but I want to make sure you know it. it's not a curve at all. It's a straight line. And standard form, our standard form for us, is ax plus by equals c. However, there is another form that we often like to use, and that's called our slope-intercept form, this one. Hey, by the way, by the way, can you go from one form to the other? Sure. In fact, if you wanted to make this one look like standard form, what would you have to do to this equation to make it look like standard form? Very good. So we just get both variables to one side. If you wanted to make this one look like slope intercept, it's a little bit more complicated because we would have to not only get the x term over here by subtracting 7x, we'd also have to then divide by negative 2. Do you see what I'm talking about there? Because we'd have to get the y completely by itself. So that'd be a little bit more work for us uh, to get something from standard form. <coughs> Sometimes it's a little bit more work to get that into slope intercept form. But it is possible we can do that, and we'll be practicing that later. Now, what I'd like to do is graph that line. We know it's a straight line because it's a linear equation. It's, it's, a, it's a one of our linear equation forms. But what we're going to do for right now is we're going to graph this just by plotting points. 
Um, so we're going to make up a table. And the reason why I need you to do this is because when we get to things that are not straight lines, that's how we're going to learn what these shapes are. We're going to plot some points and see if they're straight or see if they're, sometimes we'll get these, sometimes we'll get these weird U-shaped things called parabolas. We'll get some one-sided sideways parabolas. We'll get all sorts of weird things. And so we'll have to kind of find out or discover together what those shapes are by, by just making a T-table. You've all seen T-tables before. They just look like this. They typically have our x-axis points here and our y-axis points here, our x-coordinates here and our y-coordinates here. Now, when you're plotting points, there's seriously a couple things you have to do. One thing you have to do, you really have to find out what's happening at x equals zero. The reason why you want to find that out is you want to know what's happening on the y-axis. Do you see that x equals zero, that is the y-axis for us, right? So we want to figure that out. We also want to know what's happening to the right side of the y-axis and the left side of the y-axis. So not only are we going to use zero, we're going to use a positive number and we're going to use a negative number for our x-axis. That's going to give us a full picture. You see, if we just put in zero, one, and two, that'll work for these straight lines because they're not changing. But when we get into more advanced curves uh, later on this semester, if you're not putting in any negatives, you're not going to get the whole picture. You're going to think the graph does something that it doesn't do. Are, am I, are you with me there? So I'm going to get you in the habit now of using both sides of our graph. Now, what do I mean we're going to put in x equals 1 and 0 and negative 1? What's, what's that even mean? Plug it in and solve the problem. Okay, so since x is our what's called independent variable, we can plug things in for x. This is already solved for y. We can get out a y coordinate, and that's going to create a point for us. Notice how this, uh, this form is a little bit easier to do that with than this one. This one would be hard to find y's automatically. It's not solved for y. This one, this one's pretty easy. We're just going to evaluate x equals 1 and 0 and negative 1. That will give us a y value. I'll show you how to do the first one. So we'll do x equals 1. What this means is we're going to take our equation, y equals, the negative 2 stays the same, but the x, that's going to become whatever we're evaluating it for. So in our case, the x is going to become 1. And then we're going to add 3. So notice how the x is just becoming 1 for a second. That's called evaluation. And then we're going to figure out what it is. So how much is our y in this case? Let's do the math carefully. So we're going to have, what's negative 2 times 1? So negative, what's negative 2 plus 3? So our answer is 1. Now, we've got an x coordinate and we have a y coordinate. Does that make a point for us? Sure. x was 1, y was 1. So we can plug this in and or when we know when we plug x in, we get 1, 1, 1 is our point. 0 is a nice one, isn't it? I love the 0 one. It's so easy, it's nice, because it, it takes care of the x, x term for us. So we do the same thing, we get y equals negative 2, only this time x is 0, and then we're adding the 3. Okay, everybody, what are we going to get on this one? Yeah, that's why it's easy, because you know this whole term is eliminated because that x is 0. So y is 3. And again, we get our point. Now, in this case, which number is coming first, the 0 or the 3 in our point? 0. Because that was our x, and then we got out the y, which was 3. I'd like you to do the last one on your own. Just do that negative 1. You have the idea down. Make sure that happens correctly for you. Kind of like, sounds like Captain Kirk. Did you get that? Do you know who Captain Kirk is? Please say yes, I know who Captain yes, Kirk is. Yes. Okay, because that way I don't feel that old. <laughs> so I know who Captain Kirk is. Star Trek, anybody? Yes. That's now on video for you to watch over and over again. Even though... So we plug in negative 1, the y is going to be equal to, well, the negative 2, that's not going to change. Our x now becomes negative 1, and then we're going to add 3 to it. So we're just evaluating x for different numbers. Ooh, what happens when you do negative 2 times negative 1? Where are you going to get out of that? And then you're going to add 3, so our, our answer is 
tell you what, what if you got a point here and you graph this thing and it goes like this? Have you done it right? No. These should be lines. That's why it's called linear. So if you're getting these points that are not in a straight line, you need to check your evaluation because chances are you're making some sort of math error. <coughs> so all these for now should be completely straight lines. If they're not, figure out what's going on with your math, okay? Use your calculator if you have to for this, by the way. Just plug in the numbers in. That's okay for now. I want you to be able to get the correct points down. So y here is going to equal, like you said, 5, and we're going to get the point negative 1, 5. Let's see. We're ready to graph this thing. Now, the question I have for you is, how many points do you actually need to graph a line? How about one point? Can you graph a, a line with one point? Point. Oh, make a line. Because you could put anything through that, right? It would really wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. But as soon as we have one point and then another, yeah, that makes a straight line. So technically, really all we needed was two points, right? But what if you screw up one of the points? Well, then you're not going to really know if you've got it right or wrong, are you? If we use three points, and it, like I said, if it, it's not a straight line, that way it's, it's kind of a check for you to make sure you have this thing right. So for lines, we're going to be using three points. And now we're ready to graph it. And for us, graphing it simply means you're going to put these points on this graph just like we plotted these points on this graph. So we've only got three of them. We know that 1, 1 means we're going to go to the right one and we're going to go up one. And that's our point right there. 0, 3 means we're not going to go over left or right at all because our x coordinate is 0, so you're not moving. And then positive 3 means we are going to go up 3, so our point's right there. The last point says we are going to go to the left 1 unit from the origin and then up 5 units on the y-axis. So over to the left and up 5 at the same time. Does it look like we did it right? Are those points in relatively a straight line? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, right there that tells you, okay, I have this problem correct. What we're going to do is connect these. I'm not very good at connecting the dots, just so you know, so my lines look like squiggly sometimes, but I'll try. Oh, that's better than normal. That's pretty good for me. <laughs> we just make the dots bigger. See? We get a straight line. That's why it's, it's called linear. We're making straight lines out of this thing. How many will have a graph something like this on their paper feel okay about doing something like this? Okay, there's a couple things that I need to tell you about this graph uh, before we move any further. The first thing is, do you notice that it does in fact cross the y-axis? Where it crosses the y-axis, what we call that is the y-intercept. That's why we plug in the 0 for x. <coughs> that plugging in 0 for x here is always going to give us the y-intercept. Do, do you see what I'm talking about? If you plug in this point on the x-coordinate, it will give you where your graph crosses the y-axis, and that's an important point for us a lot of the times. So, I'll write that down for you. Where the graph crosses the y-axis, that's called the y-intercept. And we find it by plugging in x equals zero. Where the graph crosses the y-axis, what we have there is called the y-intercept. <coughs> but then we also see the graph crosses the x-axis too. So we have oftentimes a y-intercept and an x-intercept. So here, our y-intercept, what's our y-intercept in our case? Can you see it? Yeah, 0, 3 is our y-intercept. Our x-intercept looks like it's a fraction, maybe 1 and a half, comma 0. So we have both an x-intercept and a y-intercept in this case. So where the graph crosses the y-axis, it's called the y-intercept. 
and where it crosses the x-axis, of course, is going to be called our x-intercept. Now fortunately for us, this process of plugging in 0 for x gives us the y-intercept every single time. So if ever you want to find the y-intercept, which I said is very important for us, we're just going to plug in 0 for x, or we're going to set x equal to 0. So to find the y-intercept, set x equal to 0. This works, again, I, I said this a couple times now, but this works because the y-intercept will always happen at the coordinate of x equals 0. That's where that thing happens every time. So we plug in x equals 0, that gives us our y-intercept. The opposite is true for our x-intercept. So to find x-intercept, we're going to set y equal to 0. This involves a little bit more work because you have to solve for x, but it's not too bad. So to find the x-intercept, set y equals 0. I'll just talk about this process. I won't actually go through it. But if you wanted to find the x-intercept right now, what you do is you go back to this equation. Instead of putting 0 here, you put 0 here. Notice how you'd have nothing here, a 0, and you'd be left with the x. That tells you you're going to be finding the x-intercept. Do you get it? Whatever variable you're left with is the intercept that you are finding. I'll say that one more time, it's kind of important. Whatever variable you are left with is the intercept that you are finding. So if you're left with the x variable, you're finding the x intercept. If you're left with the y variable, like when we plug in 0, you're finding the y intercept. Do you guys kind of get that? It's kind of nice. So we put 0 in here and we solve for x. Subtract 3, divide by negative 2, you get positive 3 halves, or as we see here, 1 and a half. That's the way we define our x intercept. One more thing I want to talk about before we move any further. Would you say this graph is falling or rising as you're going from left to right? Is it falling? Let's, let's see, falling. Falling or rising? What do you think? Yeah, that's always going to happen if you look at your x term. That's this term. That's always going to happen if your x term has a negative in front of it. It's going to be going down from left to right. If this was a positive, this would be going up from left to right. Are you with me on that? Let's try one more. I want to show you something that we can do with some fractions and then we'll move on. Also, one other thing that's kind of of value to us. Do you guys notice, did you notice that where we crossed the y-intercept was 3, and we also had a positive 3 right there. Can you guys see that? It's not a coincidence. This number at the very end of our equation, of our linear equation, will always give you, if it's in uh, slope <coughs> intercept form, will always give you the y-intercept. And the reason why that is, look, if you're going to plug in 0 for x, do you see how this whole term is going to go away? y is 3. That's why this number is going to give you the y-intercept every single time if you have it in this form. Standard form, not so much. It doesn't work that way. But slope-intercept form, if you put in 0 for x, you're going to get y equals this number. That's going to be your y-intercept. How many people understood that part of it? Good. So this form can help us out a lot. But with that being said, let's look at this thing. Let's look at this. Does it have a number at the back end? So what do you think our y-intercept is going to be? Zero. It's like having a plus zero at the end. It's, we're, we should be crossing at zero. Now we're going to plug in three points to test that, but we should be crossing right here at the origin. Okay, that's what should happen. Also, another thing, just by looking and comparing this one to this one, do you think we're going to be going up from left to right or down from left to right? What do you think? Does it have a negative in front of it? then we're not going down, we're going to be going up. So we kind of have a picture of what these graphs look like before we even start, and that's a good thing. So we know right now, this graph shouldn't be doing this, it should be doing this, 
and we should be crossing right there. Let's see if that happens by plotting three points. So same idea. <coughs> Now, if you remember anything what I told you about 15 minutes ago, the three points that we're going to check for our line, one of them has to be, which one? Zero. Zero is great. We want to know a zero, so I'll put that here. What else do I want to know? Positive. I want a positive and I want a negative. Now, you have choice on what you pick. You don't have to pick the same three points all the time. Pick the points that are easiest to plug in for you. Here, 1 and 0 and negative 1 were the easiest three points to plug in. 0 is always going to be a very easy point to plug in, to evaluate. But right now, if I plug in 1 or negative 1, I'm going to get a fraction. And I really don't like to plot fractions on my graphs because I'm never exact with it. Are you the same way? It's always like, I don't want to go exactly. I don't want to figure that out. So can we trick this problem a little bit to make it so we don't have to plot a fraction? If we plug in 1, we're going to get 1 half times 1. That's going to give us 1 half. What number could I use over here so that I don't get a fraction? 2. Why don't you just try 2? So if I have 1 half, let's try 2 and negative 2. And you're going to see that when I evaluate this, we'll get y equals, remember, 1 half x means 1 half times x. In our case, that's 2. How much is 1 half times 2? That's great. We have no more fraction in here. So we have a point 2, comma 1. X comes first and then our Y. The next one's really nice. Plugging in 0 is always very nice. We have Y equals 1 half times 0. What's anything times 0? Zero? Zero. <coughs> so we have a point right at the origin, 0, 0. And you know what? That's what we thought would happen, isn't it? because we didn't have the number at the very back end of our equation, we thought we would be crossing at the, or, well, at least at y equals zero. And that's what we're doing, at the origin. Last one, we'll do y equals one half times negative two. Everybody, how much is one half times negative two? Negative one. Very good. <coughs> so our last point we're going to have is negative two comma negative one. Do you still feel okay on finding these points? Do you see why we're using two here instead of one? Now we don't have to deal with those fractions. Just think about that when you're doing your problems, okay? You can choose your points. The only one you can't really choose and one you have to do is zero. So we have our x and our y axes. And we plot our points. I'll take you the easy one for you. I'll do the zero, zero. So zero, zero, you're going to do right there. Two, one. Where do we go for 2, 1? 2 to the right, 1. Okay, so we're not just going single spaces anymore. We, we said we're going to plug in 2, and then let's say we go up 1 after that. The last one we're going to do is negative 2, and then negative 1. That's down here. Hey, does it look like we did it right? Do we have a straight line? Well, for, for us, this is a pretty straight line. So at least we have our points right. We're going to graph this. This one, that's good. <laughs> Ignore this sign, okay? That's it. Did it do what we thought it was going to do? That's another way you can check your work. If you kind of look at this ahead of time without even starting it and kind of understand, no number over here means I'm crossing at zero. A positive over here means I'm going up. If you had this, you'd know you did it wrong. That's a very good thing to know about the, the graph theory, understand how these graphs are going to work. How many people, oh, people, <laughs> how many people understand how to plot points, first of all, the setup of our x-y axis, and now how to graph these lines with points? Feel okay about that? Okay. Last thing in our little review of graphing is this. We have to know what makes horizontal and vertical lines. Now, I just got through telling you, whatever variable you have means that you're going to have that particular intercept. For instance, notice how we have both an x and a y variable, right? 
That means we're going to have both an x and a y intercept. It's going to cross both these axes. If we eliminate one of the variables, for instance, we eliminate one of the intercepts. What that means is we're no longer diagonal. We're either perfectly vertical or perfectly horizontal. So we eliminate a variable, we eliminate an intercept. Do you understand the idea? We, we're just one direction, either up or down, straight up and down, or straight left and right, vertical or horizontal. Now, how you tell which you are is by the variable that you have. If you have the y variable, then clearly you're going to have a y intercept. Does that make sense to you? So if we have a y variable as we have in this case, it is going to cross the y-axis. Now think about this. Does a line like this cross the y-axis? No. Does a line like this cross the y-axis? What that means is that if it says y equals a number, it's a horizontal line. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. So this is going to cross the y-axis. Where do you think it's going to cross the y-axis? Right. What it says is no matter what you have, y is going to equal 3. The x does not even matter. It says this is a horizontal line, it's a constant, it's y equals 3, it's not changing, it's just going to cross at y equals 3 and keep on going. How many people feel okay that this is a horizontal line? Okay. So y equals a constant, this is a horizontal line. And we put over here y equals c, where c is just a number, it's just like the constant. Likewise, if we have something like x equals negative 3, notice there's no y variable. That means we cannot cross the y-axis, otherwise you would have a y variable. So show me with your hands, what's a type of line that would not cross the y-axis? <coughs> yeah, it can't be like this at all, right? otherwise it's going to cross at some point. It's got to be completely vertical. So when x equals a number, that means you're going to have a vertical line. And it's going to be at negative 3. It's the only number you have up there, so clearly we're crossing at x equals negative 3. And this happens if x equals a constant. So y equals a number, we're horizontal. x equals just a number, we're vertical. And the reason why that is, is we're eliminating one of the intercepts when we eliminate a variable. If you don't have an x, it can't cross the x. If you don't have a y, it can't cross the y. That limits what, limits what we can do. Do you feel pretty good about graphing? Would you like to be done with graphing for now? Okay, me too. Let's move on. We're done with our section C.3.